Nadaro, can you tell me uh, how much how much COVID cash went to CRT? CRT. Critical race theory in education. It's it's a racist right. uh, uh, curriculum used to teach children uh, that somehow their white skin is not equal to black skin and other things in education. Yeah. Uh, no, I do not know that. But I, I do know that there's f provisions that the uh, federal funds generally are not used, they're supposed to be used for curriculum. Oh. Uh, that it's a state. Oh, Mr. Dodaro, I have to tell you, in Illinois, they, they receive $5.1 um, at, at an elementary school there that, that used it for equity and diversity. Um, so it's, it's being used for these things. Uh, Mr. Dodaro, can you tell me how much money was given to Drag Queen Story Hour? The, the, I'm sorry, can you repeat that? Who? Drag Queen Story Time, where, where men dress up oh, as oh, women oh, and, and read yeah. confusing books to children. Yeah. First I thought you said Dry Clean. <laughs> so, uh, I'm sorry. No, I don't know the answer to either one of those two. Uh, oh, we need to look into this, and I, I urge you to do that. Um, they, uh, Bradbury Sullivan LGBT Community Center in Pennsylvania received $16,000 uh, for drag queen story time uh, from, from COVID cash. Um, I think this is an issue that needs to be looked into. A lot of this money went to things that it should have never gone to. And I thank you so much, and I yield back the remainder of my time. So here's why what we just saw was so important. Not just because Marjorie Taylor Greene made herself look like a clown, although that's certainly worthwhile, but because the Controller General for the Government Accountability Office, Jean Dodaro, had no fucking clue what she was talking about. And it's a really, really good reminder that when you take these Republicans out of their Fox News rabbit holes and put them in front of people who aren't mainlining Sean Hannity and Tucker Carlson and Laura Ingram, no one in this country has the slightest clue what these people are talking about. And if you pay attention to politics, you might forget that because we're exposed to this bullshit on a daily basis and the Overton window shifts and it all becomes normalized for us. But if you're just a regular American out there and if you come into contact with one of these Republicans, my God, they sure do sound like lunatics, don't they? So I get that Marjorie Taylor Greene thought that she was using her time during this oversight committee hearing to score some major political points and gin up some excitement, but all she did was put on full display how extreme and insane she actually sounds. This dude was more confused than when a 13 year old tries to explain to their grandparents what Snapchat filters are. The only difference being that Snapchat filters are fun and the conspiracy theories that Greene is spouting are probably caused for someone to suggest their relatives seek some professional help. And just on some specific points here, Green asks how much COVID cash went to CRT, which is essentially just Republican Mad Libs at this point. I'm not sure how much CRT costs, but I can't imagine it would be much considering it's a theory and not a thing. Although, with that said, Marjorie Taylor Greene seems to be under the impression that individual elementary schools are being allocated not thousands, not hundreds of thousands, not millions, but billions per school for this curriculum. Oh, uh, it's a state oh Mr. Dodaro, I have to tell you, in Illinois, they, they received $5.1 billion um, at, at an elementary school there that, that used it for equity and diversity. And here I was thinking that education was underfunded. Didn't realize that even elementary schools had budgets into the billions of dollars for just one program alone. Of course, the ultimate irony here is that no secondary schools teach critical race theory because it's not taught in secondary schools. Your eight-year-old is learning how to count by twos. They're not delving into the ways that law intersects with race. I mean, my God, have any of these people ever come into contact with a child? If you can get a third grader to tell left from right, that's a win. I can assure you they are not examining the social, cultural, and legal issues as they relate to race and racism. And anyone who thinks that they are is a moron. Looking at you, Marjorie Taylor Greene, and just as a quick aside, because it really isn't worth it to humor this idiocy, CRT doesn't actually mean anything to these people. It's just some nebulous catch-all term that they found to describe learning about race. But if they can attack a scary sounding name and make it seem like kids are being indoctrinated, they can vilify the very concept of any race-based education. But why would conservatives not want children to learn about race? 
to pretend that their own sordid history surrounding race doesn't exist. They know that they can't afford to alienate those white supremacists and outright racists that have so vocally ingratiated themselves into the Republican base, and so instead, their plan is to deny the very existence of their actions. And if, by chance, a student does learn about our past, well then it's not history so much as it's teaching our children to be guilty of who they are. Because apparently, as far as Republicans are concerned, students are not capable of learning about something without internalizing all of it and blaming themselves. Does that make sense? No? Didn't think so. But again, all of this is moot because the only people even taught critical race theory are graduate law students. That's it. Your kid is not learning CRT in elementary school or middle school or high school or undergrad in college or even grad school unless they're getting a law degree. So I'm pretty sure there's as much likelihood of your nine-year-old being indoctrinated with critical race theory as them learning corporate income tax law. But moving on from CRT, Green then pivots over to the next iteration of anti-LGBT culture war, and that's to attack drag queens. She asks Dodaro how much money was given to Drag Queen Story Hour, and to illustrate the extent to which he has no clue what the fuck she's talking about, he literally explains that he thought she was talking about dry cleaning. Why? Well, probably because he's not mainlining Tucker Carlson and doesn't spend any time of his life pretending to worry about Drag Queen Story Hour. And at this point, you can actually almost feel the embarrassment from Green, who offers the most tepid request to look into it before immediately wrapping up her line of questioning. Oh, we need to look into this, and I, I urge you to do that. Um, they, uh, Bradbury Sullivan LGBT Community Center in Pennsylvania received $16,000 uh, for Drag Queen Storytime uh, from, from COVID cash. Um, I think this is an issue that needs to be looked into. A lot of this money went to things that it should have never gone to, and I thank you so much, and I yield back the remainder of my time. I guess it's one thing to tweet to your already brainwormed audience the usual fear-mongering about drag queens, and something entirely different to say it out loud to a normal human being who doesn't traffic in manufactured right-wing outrage. And just one note on this whole drag queen thing. Drag shows are fantastic. I have been to more than I can count. No one doesn't have fun at a drag show. And no, for the lunatic conspiracy theorists out there, kids do not get groomed or abused or sexualized at drag shows. But I'll tell you what, I can't say the same about the church. So if you're really serious about protecting children, let's have a conversation once you've called for the dissolution of the church. Until then, spare us the faux outrage. So will Marjorie Taylor Greene ease up on the insane conspiracy theories? No. But at this point, knowing how much of a fool she makes herself out to be by doing it, I'm not even complaining. Voters have spent the last three cycles rejecting Republican extremism. So if Republicans want to continue doubling down, who am I to stop them? Before you go, if you enjoyed this video and want to see more, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. You can click the thumbnail right here on this screen. And if you want to support my work even further, the best way is to subscribe to my podcast, No Lie with Brian Tyler Cohen. There you can check out my interviews with major players in the world of politics, including President Biden, Vice President Kamala Harris, Pete Buttigieg, Elizabeth Warren, Katie Porter, Jamie Raskin, and so many more. Plus other interviews that live exclusively on the podcast. That link is also right here on this screen, or just search No Lie with Brian Tyler Cohen wherever you listen to podcasts.